162nd contact. Friday, February 19, 1982, 6.03 p.m. Billy says today is, once again, a Friday. Quetzal says that is, in fact, the case. Billy says do you now have news about Ferdinand and Ingrid? I've received a rather unpleasant phone call from her, according to which I should ask you something. Quetzal says that is known to me, and it refers to what I already indicated to you on last Friday. But I am still not sure of my case because before the end of the month, I can have no certainty. If this certainty arises, however, then no further success is granted to this intended matter, which would be the result, then, of Ferdinand's jealousy. Billy says you think that, in fact, Quetzal says my analyses indicate this. Billy says then everything would, in fact, fail. Nevertheless, I told Ingrid that I fear a failure. Quetzal says with which you may have thought incorrectness, for the signs actually exist. Billy says and, could something still possibly be changed? Quetzal says it would be extremely complicated. Billy says but it would still be possible to do something? Quetzal says that is of correctness, but success is always questionable. Billy says Ingrid complained that something is abnormal and unknown to her. Quetzal says in this case, that is a natural reaction and resulting appearance because she has very strongly, knowingly, and willingly adjusted herself to the task in a seemingly truthful and honest form. Therefore, such false actions must automatically cause abnormal reactions, particularly because there is the cognition and knowledge that a wrong act was committed, which can have even greater false consequences. That which is falsely brought forth, however, that which is falsely created also resists itself against this, which is why this factor in the interconnection is also in league with such reactions. Billy says as usual. Many things hang together. Quetzal says more than you can surmise. Billy says that, I can already imagine. Quetzal says and unfortunately, you now have to deal with it. Billy says then you already know more details? Quetzal says no, but the signs are given, even though there still isn't clarity. There is the possibility that it concerns a so-called imaginary debt, which has triggered a realistic mock trial, for Ingrid was aware of the fact that she should have refrained from such actions in accordance with your explanatory conversation. Billy says I told her that, yes, and I thought that she would keep to it. Quetzal says but she didn't do so. Billy says that may, nevertheless, not be true. Quetzal says it is, however, so. Billy says really. Quetzal says yes. Billy says you have monitored this. Quetzal says I had to do that. Billy says I understand. Quetzal says both Ingrid and Ferdinand have committed many wrong acts that are contrary to our regulations. Billy says honestly, I haven't bothered with it. Quetzal says that also wasn't your task but rather mine. But if you've made no findings, nevertheless, different group members have. Several ones have clearly observed, for example, that Ingrid was a driving force for Ferdinand not complying with our regulations, in the way that she further animated him to watch the children during the time that he should have devoted himself to his work, which daily amounts to nearly one and one half hours of effort. At the same time, the undertaking of this kind went so far that Ferdinand even took the youngest child with him into a peculiar, mobile, wooden rod container, in order to work, and together with this child, he still watched the other children, while Ingrid attended to her meditation in the center. However, this was only one of the violations, for even others constantly arouse in recent times, also with Ingrid, which she should think about thoroughly. We carried out her registration for very specific reasons, which she is fully aware of, which is why she must also seek to fulfill her obligations and our conditions. But exactly accordingly she does not act, when she is enticing Ferdinand to violate our regulations and to ignore our determinations that we have provided for them. In any case in the future, 
It should be determined for her that she completes her hour of meditation in the center during the time from 11.00 p.m. to 12.00 a.m. at the time when Ferdinand can watch the sleeping children. Henceforth, it should no longer be allowed that Ingrid can visit the center for the purpose of meditation at times when the children still fall into her watching time. And since I'm already speaking of the children, I must make a declaratory and shameful statement regarding the daughter Melanie. This child is quite clearly demanded for work too much by Ingrid and is overloaded, through which this child doesn't have enough spare time for self-activity and for playtime, which are still very pronounced in a child at this age. Even our children, who are already very much developed at this age, cannot and may not be kept busy by us in such a senseless way and certainly not a child of the earth human beings and of the present time. In this regard, Ingrid has to reduce the workload for the child Melanie drastically, and 80% less of the present work would still lie just on the edge of the maximum stress capacity. Regarding Ferdinand, I also have to reprimand that his work often doesn't run within a framework that is reasonable for him which means that his efforts only correspond to just half the value of what he would be capable of doing. In other matters, it is also manifested that he is very stubborn and wants to work according to models and rules that are neither appropriate nor right. His knowledge in practically all areas of work is often very poor, which is why he should let himself be taught. I also had to learn a lot on the earth, with regard to work that is carried out here, and I very much enjoyed the best teaching with you, you who are very well versed and knowledgeable in incredibly many works, by what means you surpass even the best of our people, who master up to fifty different professions. By this, I do declare that Ferdinand surely cannot wish for a better teacher on the earth. Billy says I know that he has ideas that cannot be realized. I have experienced this recently with regard to the construction. Quetzal says you have, indeed, enlightened me about that. But it isn't right that he can simply make things according to his own will because the given regulations are to be observed and followed in every answerable respect. And you are responsible for ensuring that these regulations, etc. are also fulfilled. And should that which is planned be done, then I must make you aware that your finances are calculated very precisely for the monthly expenses etc., so you cannot request materials of any kind before the necessary amounts are available. In Ferdinand's case, this means that you may only procure the materials once he has given you the necessary capital for it in advance. In regards to the laying of the pipelines, it is, indeed, only natural that this work goes to his burdens, for it is to his advantage. But with regard to these matters, I still have to explain to him that he has to follow your instructions regarding all these intended works, in every way, and do nothing according to his own will. The laws of your residence and of the center don't allow for violations to be made against them. Billy says I have already made that clear to him several times, nevertheless, there was no success. Quetzal says also, in reference to the night watch, things and good. Once again, he hasn't fulfilled the last duty arranged by me in this respect. As I observed, he ignored this in his old, typical fashion as he, once again, brought into play that he would have to drive home that night when he was assigned to the task of the watch, even though in each case before, he was clearly willing not to drive away until a day later. Nevertheless, his change of plans always only came when it was communicated to him that he had to carry out a night watch. In this, however, he isn't the only fallible one, but also Ingrid. It has otherwise also arisen that Ferdinand and Ingrid have made it that, in each case, they first appear at the center very late on Saturday night, even though the statutes state that core group members who stay at the center on Sundays have to appear at the center in the early morning of the preceding Saturday. So here is also committed at least a violation of the house rules, which should have already been punished long ago. In the future, these given rules of order are to be kept even by Ferdinand and Ingrid. They voluntarily agreed to participate in the meditation exercises every Sunday, which is why they have also been divided into the corresponding ring order. 
but this requires that they adapt themselves into the rules of order and accordingly arrive at the center at the given time on each Saturday before. The ordinal rule says that at seven o'clock in the morning, work must be taken up at the center. But regarding the long journey of the two, some consideration can be made according to which it is to be recorded that they should be permitted first to appear at the center at 12.30 p.m. and at 1.00 p.m. work must be taken up. This applies, at least, to Ferdinand, while Ingrid is first included in this order starting from the month of March, as was determined before. In addition, the order applies to Ferdinand that henceforth, he has to carry out a night watch each night from Saturday to Sunday, starting from midnight, and in each case, this lasts until 7 o'clock in the morning. For Ingrid, the rule applies that from the 6th of March, she is also divided into the night watch, and to be sure, during two nights per month, and in each case, she has to carry out a half watch alternately with Ferdinand. This means that the two of them, alternately in each case, have to take on three and one half hours of a watch. Eva has to make the appropriate division for this, and Ingrid's first watch has to occur, then, on the 6th of March. Then, along with this, it is also to be strictly ensured that during the time of the watch, this is carried out correctly. In each case, the spouse responsible for watching the children is the one who isn't carrying out the watch, so that the one on duty doesn't have to take a single step toward the children. With regard to satisfying the most recent child, the watch time can be set to take place during the time when no satisfying has to take place, which is absolutely no problem. In the remainder, it is still to be explained that the meditation circle was put together and programmed by me in accordance with certain values and that it is to be kept in the given composition. If even a single member falls out, then the circle cannot be accomplished because the sequence wouldn't be right anymore. Moreover, all members have already gotten into the practice of this order and have agreed that the circle can't simply be broken in this way, without adverse consequences having to be feared for the individuals. As the ring is composed, it has already become a solid circle, which could only be broken again if an approximately six-month-long interruption toward a removal by vote would be effected. This means that during this time, no more circle meditations would be carried out, neither in a closed nor open form. It is, therefore, declared to all that they can't simply leave the circle anymore, but they are now bound therein in their own interest as well as in the interest of all group members who belong to the closed circle. A respective failure of this circle may also only occur when there is actually a compelling reason for it. As for Ferdinand, I must now say that we have to think about how we can continue to help him, since obviously, due to his wrong action, what was intended can't be brought to fulfillment. Concerning this, I have to send him advice from the High Council, which is that the condition is made for him that he should now first be reflecting on how to form his life in accordance with his duty. But for him, this now means an unusually hard commitment. If he proves himself, however, and if he fulfills his duty in the coming years, faithful to the requirements placed on him, then after careful consideration, we may feel compelled again to share a mediating word with the High Council, in order to help him. For Ingrid, some assistance must be reduced, as she, too, hasn't incorporated herself into the given regulations in the way that could have been expected of her. She herself has also done faulty things that brought her and Ferdinand harm. If she still continues to violate our regulations, then any further assistance must be stopped for her. Nevertheless, all this doesn't refer to the help for the children because they bear no blame in the wrong events. Due to irrationality and individualism and also due to jealous whims, unwillingness, and a hasty change of front, etc., she didn't want to recognize the given facts, and she has also ignored orders, by what means she has, together with Ferdinand, at least threatened the intended task and the given determinations. More details in this regard will still turn out, after which we must then bring to bear eventual consequences. Billy says that was, once again, a hell of a long and also rather unpleasant speech from you.
Quetzal says regrettably, and it is really unfortunate that such concerns must be discussed again, as it was already very often the case in former times, unfortunately, before the group members had reflected upon the better. But the fact that now, with new group members, the same or similar problems appear again, this is more than just unfortunate. And after this incident, it might not just remain with this, for as I know very well, one incident leads to the next, so probably already within the next few days, such unpleasant things must be spoken of again. However, we are in no way pleased when at times, such unfortunate issues have to be dealt with in conversation by us and have to be transmitted to you for the contact reports because already for a long time, such things shouldn't have had to be included in these reports, for all group members should have progressed so far that such things are unnecessary. This is, however, not always the case, unfortunately. Nevertheless, I can only be found ready to discuss these regrettable matters openly during this current month, so that they will then appear in the transmissions. But starting from the month of March, I have other winds to blow I must, indeed, separate the chaff from the grain, after which then, such unpleasant matters will no longer be officially addressed in our conversations or transmitted to you for the contact reports. In the future, fallible ones fall under the provisions of the statutes, which means for them that they must be excluded upon the corresponding, renewed failure. Only through this will the remaining group members not be burdened again. Billy says this ought to have been done earlier. Quetzal says it seemed too hard to us, but now, we have no other choice because the time begins to hurry. But now, to your suffering, which I have diagnosed. Nevertheless, I want to talk about this with you, without these words then being transmitted. Billy says then again, go ahead, my friend. The End <laughs>